Dyspraxia of speech should only be diagnosed by a speech language pathologist. We'll discuss how you can schedule a speech evaluation in a later video. Diagnosing apraxia is a slightly tricky process. The current standard is to hold off giving a child an official diagnosis until they're at least three years old. This is because many of the normal speech behaviors exhibited by one and two year olds often resemble apraxia. Even at three years or older, we may wait to give an apraxia diagnosis until we have worked with a child for a few sessions. Kids are often shy during their evaluation, and we want to make sure we can observe the way the child speaks and communicates when they're comfortable. Diagnosing apraxia is a process of elimination. We want to rule out other speech and language issues before jumping to apraxia. That being said, here's the checklist I use if I suspect apraxia in a toddler or preschooler. The things on my list don't apply to every child, but they are common behaviors I see with apraxia. One, the child's understanding is significantly better than their expression. For example, a three-year-old who doesn't speak at all, but can follow complex multi-part directions without issue. Two, the child creates clever ways to communicate without speaking. I've encountered kids who speak in sound effects, use mostly gestures, or have made up their own form of sign language. Three, the child has more difficulty talking when they are put on the spot. So the parent says, what's your name? And the child sits there silently. However, just a few minutes later, they see the therapist's toys and say, bubbles, without any hesitation at all. This particular behavior is sometimes interpreted as being naughty, when in fact the child is physically unable to speak. Four, when the child speaks, many of the sounds are wrong for their age. Sometimes kids can only make one or two sounds, or they come into the office tight-lipped and can't say anything at all. Five, sometimes a child with apraxia can produce some later developing sounds before early developing sounds. I once had a preschooler who could make a great R sound, er, a sound most kids learn when they're older, but couldn't close his lips to make a B sound, ba, a sound most babies learn. Six, the child has issues with vowel sounds as well as consonant sounds. For instance, a child might make the E and O sounds like uh, making beat and boat sound like butt. Technically, the consonants in those words are okay, but the words are still wrong and you're not able to understand them because of the vowel. Seven, the child may have limited or slow movement of their jaw. Sometimes the child's mouth will be constantly open and they drool, or they may walk around with their mouth shut tight and seem to have difficulty opening it when asked. Again, none of these behaviors in isolation means that your child has a proxy of speech, but these are some of the indicators I look for during an evaluation.